to the hot hell darkness. Your room is ready, child. Enjoy your stay. <laughs> People always ask me if I enjoy running the hot hell darkness. Of course I do. Is it because I have the best interests of children at heart? No. It's because bad children are evil and need to be stopped. Remember, badness can come out of the tiniest thing. Like a cauliflower, for example. Farty pants, farty pants, too brown for party pants. <laughs> this is the visitor's book, where all the grisly tales of all my wicked guests are written down. Want to see why one of these bad children is down here? This is Bart's story. I call it the rise and fall of the evil guff. When Bart Thumper refused to eat vegetables, his worried parents tried to big them up in new and interesting ways. Hi, Bart. My name's Yummy. I'm good enough to eat. Ah! Welcome to Taste TV, the first TV channel that lets you taste what you're watching. Have a try. Then, on his ninth birthday, they used a sweet butterscotch icing to disguise the taste of a cauliflower. There was something in that, wasn't there? Your first vegetable. <coughs> Mr and Mrs Thumper thought they'd done a good thing, whereas, in fact, they had just put the entire planet at risk. <coughs> Four hours later, while Bart lay in bed muttering dark words like betrayed and revenge, he heard a tiny squeak from a part of his body that had hitherto remained silent. It was followed by such a vile smell that Bart thought his insides were rotting. He ran downstairs to share his discovery with his parents, who took one whiff and bounced off the walls. We'll give you anything you want, just don't drop another one. Bart suddenly realised that inside his gut he had the means to control his parents. All he needed was fuel for his weapon. You want us to buy what? Vegetables. Vegetables? Our boy wants vegetables. Needless to say, his parents were only too happy to sign their own death warrants. For the next week, Bart filled his gut tanks with gassy greens until an experiment under the duvet told him he was ready to change the balance of power. I don't want to go to school today. Well, you have to. No, I don't, because if you make me, I'll blow a bottom burp. <laughs> Oops, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> The next day, Bart got off school permanently. Yes, I want to go home. I'm bored. Nobody goes home till I tell them to. OK, say hello to a pants puffer. <laughs> From now on, you do as I say or else. That night on the news, after Inspector Smoofer had nicknamed him the Evil Guff, and described him as highly dangerous and not to be approached. Mr and Mrs Thumper rushed Bart to an all-night surgery where the doctor measured the strength of Bart's rippers with a canary test. Your son is a human stink bob. He has an enlarged composting mechanism in his stomach which turns vegetables straight into methane. Is there a cure? You could try sewing up his bottom. Alternatively, he has to stop eating vegetables. But I love vegetables! Please, Bart, for the sake of the planet, before your emissions burn an irreversible hole in the ozone layer. 
When they got home, Mr and Mrs Thumper wrapped their son in a heat-sealed nappy and told him which way the wind was blowing. No more vegetables. It's like living with a cow. Which unfortunately gave Bart the idea for an alternative fuel. If vegetables made Bart's flutter blasters smelly, grass added the nuclear factor. As Bart discovered the next morning when he dropped a sly one at the breakfast table and blew his parents halfway to Scotland where a passing llama truck turned them into pet food. Without parents to stop him, Bart was suddenly free to do what he'd always wanted, which was basically cause chaos. He changed the migrating route of birds, melted roads, and knocked footballers off their perches. As he brought the country to its knees, Parliament called for Bart to be locked up. How? Well, he'll simply huff and puff and blow the walls down. So what are you going to do, Prime Minister? Well, as the Prime Minister, I do, of course, have an excellent policy to hand. Which is what? Um, bears. <laughs> he'll live with bears, yes. Bears are not human, you know, they're naturally smelly creatures and will therefore be less offended by any seepage from the boy's cheesy colon. Plus, there's always the chance that one of them might rip off his head and play basketball with it. <laughs> so that was the plan. The Prime Minister hoped that a bear would kill Bart before he killed everyone else. But the truth was that the Prime Minister knew nothing about bears. <laughs> If we went outside and broke wind in front of our public all day, do you think people would still come and see us? No, they would not. We have learned to control ourselves, Bart. More tea, dear. Are there any more of those delicious scones? Decorum, Bart. Manners. There is a time and a place for everything. And that time is now. It took less than three minutes for Bart to decide that bears were far too civilised for him. And using a high-pressure thunder dumpling, he propelled himself over the perimeter fence. He holed up in a caravan in the Chiltern Hills, where eating grass made him go a little bit strange. And he woke up one morning thinking he ruled the world. Citizens of the world, I am the evil goth. My needs are small, but your danger is bigger, so do as I say. Unless I receive a helicopter pad, my own island, a cook who can make spaghetti bolognese, a shark tank, a fluffy white cat, an exploding pen, and six billion pounds for a submarine, I shall eat a field full of grass and do such a monster butt mot that I will destroy the ozone layer in one pop. Then all of you will be cooked up for good. You've got one hour till liftoff. Goodbye. The trouble was that nobody really thought he'd do it, and so nobody bothered to get back to him, which meant that one hour later, it was all over, bar the wootsie. I am the evil guff, and I will have what I want. Then he let rip with a nuclear walk the like of which had never been heard before. It was so powerful that it not only blew a hole in the ozone layer, but in the space-time continuum behind the ozone layer as well. Bart shot out into a parallel time zone and landed in a festering stench pit of stinking crud that turned out to be a medieval dunghill. And over the next three years, from 1261 to 1264, he was slowly, ever so slowly, composted to death. And if that's not a lesson on the perils of cutting the cheese in public, I don't know what is. <laughs> farty pants, farty pants, too brown for party pants. <laughs>